Hi everybody. I am very excited to bring you a tutorial about Google Sheets, which is a free piece of software that you can use um, with Google Drive. So I think that this is going to be a really great option for a lot of people, not only in AP Physics, but maybe in the future here because it allows you to have some sharing of data uh, in a very easy way. And again, this is something that you can work on in school, you know, when you go home and log into your Google account, there it is in Google Drive. So I find Google Sheets to be extremely intuitive, especially if you are familiar with Excel. So let's get started here. You'll notice um, I've opened up Google Sheets and I've just added in the exact same data that we were working with um, in Excel earlier. So it's data from a lab where we collected the diameter in centimeters of these different objects and we measured the circumference of those objects. Okay, so again, you'll see here um, I've added the independent and dependent variable labels. Okay, and you don't need to do that. I just tend to do that at the beginning of the year until everybody gets into the pattern of um, how we need to input these into spreadsheets in order to get graphs that we want. And you'll notice here that a lot of these options are familiar to you just like in Excel. So you have a color fill, for example, your undo buttons, and a lot of these options at the top. Once you've put your data in, very similar to Excel, we're just going to highlight the cells that we would like to graph. And the next step is going to be to go to Insert, and we want to go all the way down to Chart. Once you do that, you'll see there's many different options. Um, here's some recommended options that come up, but you can go to Chart Types and it'll give you the full array of what your options are. We're looking for a scatter here, so I'm just going to click on Scatter and then Insert. So here I have um, a graph, and just like Excel, I mean, it's coming out with no title and no axes labeled, but that's not a problem. Uh, we can definitely handle that. So the next step is we can click right um, on the graph here, and what I've done is I've right-clicked, and you get a whole list of options here. So I'm going to start with the title here. So remember in physics, the title is going to be the Y quantity versus the X quantity. So for us here, this is going to be circumference versus diameter. And you just hit enter and then it's applied for you. You can then format the heading to your liking here. Like I might want the font a little bit larger for a heading. Um, so I actually find uh, Google Sheets to be even, you know, a bit more convenient than uh, Excel for this purpose. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, underneath the x-axis here, if I right-click again, I get some axes options. So I'm going to do horizontal axis title. How about horizontal axis labels here? Oh, I don't need that. Sorry, I do want the title. So this is going to be diameter. In centimeters. And again, you could like reformat that if you'd like to. I'm going to right click near the y axis title. So we're going to need a left vertical axis title. And this one is going to be the circumference. Okay, so now that you have your graph titled and labeled, the next step is going to be thinking about adding a trend line, right? So very similar to what you've done before, you can click on the points and so you can click on the points and you want to go down to advanced edit. Once you go down to advanced edit here, we're going to need to scroll down, um, but this is also a good opportunity for you to kind of see all of these options that are available to you. So even though Google Sheets is free, um, there's quite a bit you could do with it. So the trend line happens to be at the bottom, and it has its own pull-down menu where you can choose from linear, exponential, polynomial. This looks to be linear to me, so 
we can add our trend line here and I'm just going to click on update. The next step is a little bit different from Excel. So ultimately, in order to write an equation for this relationship, I'm interested in finding the slope. I'm interested in finding the y-intercept. And I'm also interested in finding the r-squared value, because that will give me some information about how well this line, um, which happens to be linear for what I chose for this particular relationship, how well this line fits the data. Okay, now in order to find slope, we're going to use a function to do that. And one of the nice things about Google Sheets is that once we hit the equal sign here for this cell, if I start to type in the word slope, you can see I, I get um, some options, some of these commonly used functions. So if I use slope, okay, this is exactly what I'm trying to find here, so I'm going to click on that. It also will give you some information about how that slope needs to be entered. So if you notice in the example, you have the slope from your y points. Um, you have to enter your y points first and then your x points. So I'd like to show you how to do that. So again, it's going to be the y points first. So this is another reason why I like to label it here. Um, but what I'm going to do is highlight the y points. Okay, I've added a comma to separate the y points from the x points, and I'm going to highlight these x points. And if you see, as I was highlighting everything on the left, this cell automatically inputted what I had highlighted. And if I hit enter, you can see it's calculated the slope for me. Okay, y-intercept is going to be a similar method. I'm going to put in the equal sign, and I'm going to start typing y intercept okay and it came up for me so I'm going to click on the function again very convenient that it gives you an example so we're going to be entering the y data and then a comma and then the x data so let me do the y here separated by a comma and you can see that the y intercepts that we've gotten here is very close to zero which is what we would expect in order to find the r-squared value, again, we're going to use a function for this. So we will have an equal sign. And then we can start with r-squared, and you get rsq, which is the square of the correlation coefficient, which is exactly what I'm looking for. And so if I click on that again, here is a great example. Very similar, though. You're just adding in the y data and then the x data. So we're going to add in our y and then separate that by a comma and the x data. And if the linear fit is correct, correct the r squared value should be very close to 1, which it is. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful for you um, as you start out with Google Sheets. If you have any questions, please let me know or send me an email. And I hope you have a great day.